Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, my name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you, my friend, are in the right place if you want the information and the data that you need to make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. I know there are a ton of questions surrounding real estate and mortgages right now, and how can there not be? I mean, <laughs> the headlines are crazy. Each week, there are another set of headlines that are doom and gloom. And if you read through all the data, there's some good news in there too. But uh, on the surface, I, you know what I, what it is? Truly, headlines have become that um, that bait and switch, right? Or not bait and switch, but clickbait. That's the word I'm, or term I'm looking for. Their goal is just to get you to click on the headline. And we talked about it last week. We went through an article together that on the surface indicated foreclosures were spiking. And the article and the... Um, uh, or the headline rather in the subheadline indicated that on the surface, it would be a bad time to jump into real estate. I can't believe anybody would have read that headline and assumed any other. However, we took a deep dive into that article together uh, on the air and quickly discovered that's not w- that what the data was saying at all. Um, the, the spike in foreclosure activity that was referenced in the headline was merely a uh, product of banks not being able to foreclose during the pandemic because of the moratoriums. And then deep, deep in the article, there was one sentence that I thought summed up everything. And that was that um, delinquencies, which, you know, inarguably are the leading indicator of a foreclosure. Uh, they were down to the lowest rate since 1999. So on the surface, that article indicated uh, bad news, but as we read deeper together as a group, we discovered pretty quickly that there was a lot of good news in that article. And that article could have, the headline could have as easily been, uh, delinquencies fall to the lowest rate since 1999. So anyway, that's a common theme with me. I always encourage everybody to deep dive the data. And I try to give you the information on this show each week that you need to be able to do that for yourself. So um, again, my name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And if you want a deep dive into some of those articles and data sets that we use, you can always visit the Facebook page. I post everything there. Uh, And I will, after this show today as well, post everything that we reference. So go to Facebook and search The Mr. Mortgage Show, and you'll find everything that we talk about uh, in each episode. So anyway, speaking of each episode, let's go ahead and get uh, right into this week's. There was another interesting article that I read. It was a news release, came out in the real deal.com, which is a mortgage and real estate uh, aggregator site. And they were speaking to Lennar, their press release and Lennar is a national home builder. I think most people know uh, Lennar. They're pr- uh, really predominant in Florida. They're based in Miami, but they announced a, a $4 billion uh, platform initiative in which they're going to acquire uh, single family homes and townhouses with the goal to rent them rent to own. So they see an untapped market in the rent to own space and they're going to jump on it. And I find that super interesting because here Lennar, um, a leading national home builder feels good enough about housing in the future to want to buy it and rent it with uh, option to sell to their tenants, which fascinates me because usually logic would dictate that if a builder saw trouble on the horizon in the market, the last thing they would want to do is go out there and create more inventory uh, that they would have to carry during a downturn. So, all, you know, I get it. They're going to rent these properties out. So in theory, someone else is going to service that debt for them. But nonetheless, they're stocking their shelves with inventory in what some people think is the face of a downturn. So one more indication that a downturn might not be uh, so uh, imminent. It might not be uh, pending the way everybody, uh, seems to think it is. And, you know, if you listen to this show, uh, or if you have listened to this show rather for any amount of time, you know, my opinion is also that we don't have a crash cycle in the near term. You know, honestly, there's just not, um, I mean, it's, there's just no supply. There's not any supply that I think is going to flood the market and offset the demand. And you hear me talk about it all the time. That's how you gauge a market's volatility 
is supply and demand. And that's inarguable and across all markets. The only reason a stock goes up in value is because more people want to buy it than want to sell it. The only reason it goes down is more people want to sell than buy. And right now today, there are still many, many more people who want to buy real estate. Here's Lennar included than want to sell real estate. And if they're going to go out there and acquire existing homes, that's one more pressure on inventory because they've got $4 billion billion going into this program that indicate um, they have a strong desire to be owners of real estate. So there's so many reasons why I think supply remains under pressure uh, for the foreseeable future, which is what is going to determine what what happens long term in the market. So for now, I don't see any indication of um, of a downturn in the market. And, and this is one more indication of that. So anyway, speaking of market cycles, there was another super interesting article that I read this week. And this one was published online uh, a year or so ago. And the the data used in the article is a little irrelevant now because of its age. But one thing that really stood out to me was a great definition of the four cycles of any market. And this is around housing, but any market goes through a recovery phase, which is post a bubble burst. And then from recovery, they go into expansion. That market from expansion goes into hyper supply or oversupply. And then that starts a devaluation which causes a recession. Now, I'm not talking about an economic recession. I'm talking about a recession specific to any particular market. So in housing, um, we go through a recovery phase, which was what happened after the the bubble burst and the market bottomed. We went through a recovery phase and then into an expansion phase, which is where I believe we are now. And and here's why I say that. And I'm going to post this on the Facebook page also because I think it's a super interesting read. But there are five uh, questions that they're asking of each market. And here are the questions to determine if we're, which one of those four phases we're in. Um, is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? I think inarguably right now it's still a seller's market. Is the vacancy of property or the vacancy rate rather low, moderate, or high? Well, right now vacancy rate is still super, super low. Is new construction increasing moderating or decreasing right now today um, it's still increasing and I base that on the new construction permit uh, applications the absorption rate which means how fast a property is sold or leased when it comes to market so think of how quickly the market's desire for a product absorbs its supply so absorption rate is super high right now you still see homes selling the first weekend they're on the market Uh, And then rent increases are still moderate to high. Now, because of the way we answered those five questions, it's by definition an expansion market that we are still in today. Now, in my opinion, I think we're at the tail end of that expansion market. But before we get into a bubble bursting, we have to get into a market that is oversupplied. And that's where I go back to the whole supply and demand thing. And right now, today, there's still much more demand than supply. And those questions asked of each market clearly indicate that we need to go into an oversupplied market before we ever, ever crash. So I share that just to put everybody's mind at ease. I think we are still in for, um, I don't know, the foreseeable future. The uh, housing market still remains strong, in my opinion. Now, I don't think we're getting 20% year-over-year appreciation, nor do I think we should. I don't think that's healthy. I think it happened so fast that a lot of people who were prepared and able uh, to purchase missed out because they weren't ready. They hadn't got their mind around it. Things went too far too fast, and there's some people left sitting on the sidelines, no doubt about it. And I feel for those people. I hope that there is something in the market that can change that. Maybe these rent-to-own programs will help people ease into ownership. So anyway, I throw all that out there just to share one more data set that indicates that for the the near term, real estate still makes a ton of sense. And uh, we'll dive deeper into all that during uh, this week's show. If you have questions, you can call or text them to 561-291-8569. Sit tight for two minutes and uh, we will get to all your questions on the other side of this break. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back and you heard the man. Give us a call or send us your questions via text to the Anytime Hotline, which is 561-291-8569, 561-291-8569. Get your questions on the air via text or you can just call and talk to Dom. Uh, my name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, where we like to answer all of your mortgage and real estate uh, questions and give you the info you need to make the best decisions for you and your family. So one more time, 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline, and we'll be happy to get your questions on the air. If you're not a fan of texting or don't want to talk to Dom or I, just uh, visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage, never a dot com. And there you can submit your questions as well. Also, too, you hear me talk about the Facebook page. Um, we're posting a lot of data and articles um, to the Facebook page during the week. So you can check that out anytime at The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook. So speaking of questions and uh, my sidekick, my number one guy here, Dom, my producer, he's manning the uh, question line and I think he's got a couple teed up for us. So let me throw it over to Dom and see what we have question wise. Dom, what do we have? Yes, Derek just emailed us. Derek's asking, last week you talked about gifting the down payment to our children. Can this money be from our equity credit line? We've just started the discussion with our daughter and I want to do this right. Okay, Derek, that is a great question. And first, before I answer your question, let me say thank you for listening last week and tuning again, uh, tuning in again this week. So uh, we must be doing something right or you all. You're just a glutton for punishment. So anyway, I appreciate you. Um, Great question. So uh, yes, you can use your equity line as the source of the gift that you're going to give your daughter for the uh, down payment. And that's a common misconception. A lot of people are under the impression that the donor cannot borrow the money. And that's simply not the case. The caveat with a gift is that the recipient is not required to repay the gift And part of the process of doing this um, transfer of funds, there's a protocol that needs to happen. Um, But also part of that protocol is that a gift letter is executed and signed by all parties, simply stating that um, the, the donor expects no repayment. And this is truly a gift. And that letter accompanies the loan application. So Derek, to answer your question, yes, you can tap your equity, equity line to use as a gift for your daughter's home purchase. And 